What's up everybody, this is Carrick with ACG and today I am stoked as I bring to you the review of, for Arion Legacy of the Korai Odan, which I'm sure I'm pronouncing wrong. It's a fantasy 2D RPG slash Street Fighter mashem up based in a fantastical African landscape of history, mystery, and myth. Brought to you by Kiro Games. Let's see how well they did in mixing role playing with traditional 2D fighting, shall we? As always, if you like this review, maybe subscribe. So here's the review for Arion. Power Walking Prince is the world's worst death posture and the closest I've ever seen a game come to language support by not offering language support. Graphics are up first. I, man, I love this. From the slick animations of the characters that dot the landscape to the main character's frantic fighting style, and of course, those you pick up later on the game. It's really colorful and absolutely distinct. Listen, you could probably search Steam's listing for 2D games and not find one that looks very close to this. It's attention to detail and delivering a unique location, and yet mirroring some of Africa's historical stylings means that something is really distinct here, as it is daring. You will not see a game that looks a lot like this anywhere else. Now, it's a very cool use of color effects and shading allows the world to revel a bit in presenting this unique location to you as well. And then you fight. Now, this is both good and bad. First, the animations for the characters are detailed within battle, deep and exhibit a higher frame rate for some animations than I think I would have originally expected. But seriously, it needs optimization. I was seeing frame rate drops on a 980 GTX of 1440p, and even at 920p occasionally during battles, I'd see that meter dip just a little bit below 60. Of course, in the midst of a battle on a 2D plane with eight angry magic spell using warriors all wanting to see what your spirit looks like separated from your body, a little bit of slowdown might be nice, but I didn't actually like the way it looked. Now, that being said, most animations, locations, and characterizations all looked great. I love the presentation in this game as a whole. Not all is perfect here, though. While some locations are almost draped in this thick blanket of animations and layer upon layer upon layer of detail and movement, <laughs> other locations can look a bit sparse for what's occurring on screen, and though it never looks samey, in fact, I would challenge anyone to indicate that it does, it still doesn't look as busy as it probably should. Sometimes it just looks like everyone got to a certain spot and said, hey, man, I got no ideas, and then when they came back, they just quietly turned their monitor off and hope no one noticed. It results in some locations looking like someone took an erase tool to half that location. That being said, Special moves, effects, blurs, and some basic lighting here and there do a really good job helping the game punch a bit past its weight graphically. And of course, those locations that are hyper detailed, and most are, are almost fantastically so. It just has this really weird ebb and flow at times and makes it a bit more noticeable when a place isn't really up to snuff. Sound, music, and voice. And sound is up first. I think it's really important that people understand how cartoony this is going to sound. It's not aiming for realistic anything, so movement is accentuated with anime-like sounds of characters cutting through the air, and blocks and sword swipes sound like they were performed next to the requisite line of megaphones. And even during the busier parts, I was able to use the sound from time to time to identify what was happening on screen at any one time when things got really busy. I'd say, pretty okay sound. Music. So this is a really interesting soundtrack for me. While I was expecting a far more grounded and perhaps native sounding soundtrack, the mix of both traditional African instruments as well as more modern synths was shockingly put to good use here. Now, I may sound surprised, but I wasn't really expecting as many present day instrument styles within this title. Now, most of it's good, but I feel that a number of folks might consider this a bit broader reaching than expected for the title, and especially the way the titles look. And I admit that while listening to it, there were times where the separate tracks didn't really mend together at all, or as well at least as I certainly expected them to, but for their individual spaces, they were completely fine, and it's got more in common, I would say, with the level music soundtracks of a Street Fighter game than it does the overall presentation and polish of, let's say, an RPG that are sort of like for like in their kind of track system, regardless of where you are within the game world. It's good, but it's a little bit eclectic for, I think, some people. Voice. None. So let's move on. Gameplay. And of course, for many, that's the big dog, the thing that matters. You play as Enzo, a prince turning king on the day of his wedding, insert a coup, a pissed off brother-in-law, and the ability for characters basically call down the dead to help him do battle, and you then have a grand story of a man with his new bride searching the lands for a band of expendables to do battle against the new usurper king. As you travel the land and meet folks and beat them up to make you join them, you play in both an RPG and 2D fighter styling. The RPG elements, I would say, are sort of walking the land, talking with folks, and occasionally 
cracking open fruit, which in this world, for some reason, contains ancient wisdom. I'm not sure how that came about, but okay. You travel around gathering clues and talking to folk. However, the main gameplay, at least I think for many people, is within the 2D fighting game engine itself, which is a hodgepodge of Guardian Heroes and Street Fighter, with you taking command and unleashing hell on a vast assortment of different enemies who try to do you dead. Here's the problem. It's just a little bit clumsy. It just doesn't matter if you're switching between your characters or your character skills or moving around the battle scene or zipping behind an enemy to attack them from the back. The game always appears to be just asking a bit more than today's controllers can deliver. For example, zipping around in a teleport dash, which is a major move, it's cumbersome with its additional use of thumbsticks and buttons resulting in lots of use of the analog sticks for a combat on a 2D plane, which just feels a little bit odd. Even more odd is the digital pad is just used to hot enter different things like health and magic potions. That could have easily been used on the analog stick, leaving the digital for the actual movement. Its collision detection is also a bit wonky, and with everyone flying through everyone else, the entire battle can appear messy from time to time. It's really odd when you think about it. This is a game that seems like it needs to hinge on its 2D action being absolutely tight, and yet in many ways it's not, with delays and special attacks initiating like they were thinking if they want to do it or not, and oddly specific requirements and entry for some moves, and then barely any for others. Some move input requirements are so odd I found myself doing many special attacks without even coming close to what I thought was the actual entry itself. And then you get the localization. Now, it said I could choose English, so I did, but this is almost as bad as that one video I made where I redid the review using YouTube's voice recognition. It's got all kinds of issues with spelling, missing words, repeated sentences, and lost in translation moments throughout the entire title. Which is sad as I feel that translation is one of those things that if you already have the general gist down, someone else, a native speaker, should be able to rake it down into the usable native language somewhat easily. And we've seen that happen with other games, but unfortunately not here. Did I ever get lost due to it? No, absolutely not. Was I sometimes at a loss as to what was being said? Yeah, a good deal of the time. Now, while much of the story revolves around you and your bride basically tindering the world, finding friends, and unlocking your ability to call down spirits, to me what's really fascinating here is the fact that despite the issues, the story was very good. Sure, at times its translation was off, but the story itself and the politics and the family ties and just all of that was really very, very well done. From understanding the traditional rituals of African people to the graphical representation still mixed with fantasy of the locations in ancient kingdoms. There's something very different about this title and its mix of fantasy, myths, and cultures from a location rarely represented in gaming was a really welcome addition and something I think you guys have heard me talk about in the past. Fun factor. I enjoyed it. Yeah, the combat's a bit wonky, and that's central to its design, which hurts it from time to time, but because of the way the game's set up and the way the story's developed, I found myself noticing that the lack of polish present from time to time wasn't intruding that much on the game as a complete title. It's just absolutely interesting to play through. You guys know me and how much I adored Beyond Good and Evil and its unique characterizations and hidden reflections of different cultures within its animal kind and within its different languages, or the journey down and its point-and-click adventures and my enjoyment with those titles in particular. However, compared Compared to those titles, I think the actual gameplay here, even with a couple of its issues in the combat, is more solid than both those titles, and even with a couple misses, this game still hits more than not. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale. Right now, this is a wait for a sale. It's going to be $16.99 on their main page right now, $19.99 on Steam when it comes out. But there's enough issues there with the long loading times and some of that wonkiness with the combat that I think that I really can't suggest it at that full price, at least right now. There is a lot of time within the game, 20 hours, but some of those loading screens that you saw within this video and that warning I put up can get a little long. So anyway, that's it for me. If you liked the video, hit thumbs up. If you disliked it, hit thumbs down. And as always, peace out.